Today's stories do contain some disturbing content, and as always, viewer discretion is advised. And if you have a story you would like to send my way, just go to asthereavendreams.com and click the button to do so. And thank you. Way back when I was 15, maybe 16, I used to be a member of a medium-sized online forum that was designed for indie authors to share their work and get feedback, or even win small prizes for little contests and competitions that they held. I was actually one of the most active users on the forum because I was really giving being an author everything I had and I was putting a lot of effort into writing short stories for my collection. My whole situation started during one of the writing competitions that I mentioned. I don't recall the theme, I just remember that I was super confident that I could write a decent little story for it. Much to my surprise, I actually won the competition. The prize was a $20 Target gift card, so it wasn't like it was some big contest for a major reward, but to me, it was an amazing feeling knowing that I had won this contest, where dozens of people had entered. The day that I won, I received a private message from one of the head mods of the forum. At the time, I only knew him as White Oak, and after a while, which I'll explain in a bit, I did learn what his full legal name was. That said, for the sake of the story, I'm just going to refer to him as White Oak. So, White Oak sent me a DM with a message saying, Congrats on winning our monthly writing competition. Your story was chosen by a majority vote of the mod team, and, as such, you have won a gift card. I just need to know where to send it to and to whom I'm sending it, and I'll get it in the mail right away. And, being a super excited 16-year-old girl, that was feeling like she had just won the entire world, I responded with my first and last name, as well as my home address. At no point did I pause to think that maybe I should have asked my parents, or not sent this random person my home address, because I thought this was going to be a professional trade-off. I won a contest, I was getting a prize. After I sent that, he told me that he would get the card in the mail here as soon as possible, and once again, told me that my story was perfectly written, and just really talked up my prose. I was elated that someone that was so important was giving me attention. He was important to me at least, because he was a big shot on the forum. I thanked him, we had an informal conversation, and that was pretty much where I thought it was going to end. I thought it was just going to be him complimenting my work, and me thanking him. Of course, that's not where it ended. About a week later, I hadn't received any word on the gift card, or whether or not it was on the way, and while I didn't want to be pushy, I decided to send White Oak a message to just ask if he had sent it yet, as I was super excited to get it. He messaged me back pretty much right away and said that he was going to send it in the next day or two, but he hadn't yet. I thanked him again and just mentioned that I was still excited about the whole thing. After a few minutes of not getting a response back, I thought that that was the end of the conversation. But then, White Oak sent me a message saying, You know, you're really beautiful. I was a bit confused. He had no way of knowing what I looked like. I messaged him, asking where that came from, and he responded by saying, Oh, I looked you up and found your Facebook. I was looking at your pictures and just wanted to tell you that you were beautiful. To say that I was a bit shocked would be an understatement. I responded by saying, Oh, I didn't expect you to look me up. In his words, he couldn't help himself because of how sexy my name was and he said that he was very happy to know that I was just as sexy as my name. At this point, I knew that he was probably just going to keep going with it, so I figured I would go ahead and shut him down 
and tell him that I was only 16, and that he should probably move on. He then told me that he, again, in his words, preferred girls my age because they were less likely to fight back. I was mortified by this comment. I didn't respond to this message. I figured that I would move on instead and it would just go away. Unfortunately, on this forum, there was no method of blocking people or ignoring them, which it was either a major design oversight for the page, or was done maliciously, based on what happened later. So, because of that, I had no way to stop him from messaging me. And he did keep messaging me. He would send me a message daily telling me how much he loved me. He would send me random messages asking me to send him naked pictures of myself. He would send me messages telling me all the things that he was doing to himself while thinking of me and creeping through my Facebook. After several days of putting up with this, I decided I would move to take action against White Oak. I figured I would contact the owner of the forum with a message and tell him what his second-in-command was doing. This did not go as I expected. Of course. I sent him a message with screenshots of the messages that White Oak had been sending me, and I explained that I had given White Oak my information for the gift card that I won in the contest. I tried to give him as much information as I could, and explain the whole thing as best as possible. And the screenshots that I took were more than enough to really display what was happening. He did reply, but his response was that he would just have a talk with him about it. He didn't say sorry, he didn't seem to really care or that he was shocked at all. About two days later, he sent me another message that said, I spoke with White Oak about the situation, and he told me that it never happened. I believe him. Please do not contact us about this again. I was livid. He was literally believing that White Oak had never sent me any of the messages, even though I literally had receipts. I messaged him back saying just that, asking how he could believe White Oak over me when I had screenshots of the conversation, and then I mentioned that I would be passing the information on to the police, since I was a minor. I thought for sure that he would see this, and see that he needed to take it seriously. But then, the next day, when I went to log in to see if he had replied to me, my account was gone. Like, completely gone. I tried to log in and it kept giving me an error saying that my account didn't exist. When I tried to do a forgot password, it said that my email didn't exist in the system. He had completely purged my account, it probably as a way to cover for White Oak. As now, I had no live access to my account. I still had the screenshots, but a lot of good that would do me if I couldn't prove anything was on the site. At this point, I decided to bring my mom and dad into the situation. I told them that I had won a writing contest, and that I had given the site my information for the gift card. I told them about how the guy had found me on Facebook, and I gave them my screenshots and explained the whole thing. They were not happy, obviously, and they implemented several controls in my internet usage, which was fine, but when my dad contacted the police, they basically told him that there wasn't much they could do without information on the person, since all I had was a username on a random forum. Again disappointing. But this was around 2008 or so, so I don't think they had the forensic capabilities that they do now. I can't really say that I fault them for it, and maybe they could have done something more, but it was what it was. And then, the final bit of the story. About a week after this all happened, I had signed into my Facebook, which I admittedly should have deleted it, considering that's how he'd found me. I saw when I logged in that I had a friend request from a man named Gary T. At first, it didn't click in my head who it was. I accepted it, and as soon as I did, I got a message saying, I'm sorry we had to delete your account. I miss you so much. 
and I'm glad that you accepted my request. I responded with some harsh words, and thankfully, Facebook does have a block option. And I blocked him. I felt sick that he had really found my Facebook, and that he thought I would seriously just sit there and let him stay on my friends list. Thankfully, that was the last time that I ever heard from White Oak, or Gary T. The only reason I thought about submitting this story was that White Oak came up in a conversation with my sister. I had completely put it out of my mind after all of these years, but she mentioned him for some reason during one of our conversations, and it led to me thinking about the whole thing. That night, I actually went home and googled his name, and after a bit of digging, I found out that he was in prison. At least, probably. I found a story about him being arrested and charged for lewd behavior with a minor, as well as several counts of soliciting minors. From what I read, he's going to be in prison for a very long time. So, at least with that fact out there, I guess I never have to worry about meeting White Oak ever again. A number of years ago, I was pretty active in a few sites that were basically like mini social media pages that weren't very well known. There was one in particular that I really enjoyed. It was a page that was dedicated to a specific game, and that's a pretty decent sized MMO. And I liked to lurk the boards and just kind of read what others were saying or talking about. I did get active on the board at one point, and that's when I ended up having a conversation with the person that, very quickly, became my long-distance-slash-online girlfriend, Amanda. I was young and still pretty naive about things on the internet, but she and I became pretty fast friends and had a lot in common. We talked a lot in DMs on the site and discussed pretty much everything. She was the same age as me. 17, and she had a lot of the same issues that I had. Basically, she was just like me and we hit it off pretty quickly and got close. We ended up agreeing that we should give it a shot to see what happens, and I was over the moon because I've never been much of a social butterfly, and I've only ever had one girlfriend in my life before this point, and that was in middle school for like three months. Obviously, the relationship started on the MMO board, and we chatted there a lot, and then it went over to email so that we could get a bit more personal. It wasn't anything lewd or anything like that, it was just us talking a bit more about ourselves and saying things that we didn't feel comfortable throwing out there on a potentially unsecured forum. We emailed each other non-stop, and I tried to go a step further and ask her if she had a Facebook account so that we could be friends on there and get a bit more into real-time communications. She told me that she didn't, and that she didn't feel safe using Facebook, because it was... watched. I asked her what she meant, and she told me that, if you use Facebook, you were on a list of people that were being watched. I know that Facebook isn't exactly the best platform, and yeah, they're probably on the short list of pages that are checked by the government agencies, but... They aren't interested in me, a 17-year-old from the northern part of Mississippi. Uh, but I had to respect her opinion, no matter how strange it was, and just say that it was okay and that we could keep talking through email. After a while, she ended up messaging me and asking for a picture of myself, because she, in her words, was really falling for me and needed to know what her Prince Charming looked like. If that message didn't make me swoon a bit, then nothing would. I went and got my mom's digital camera, and took probably the worst MySpace-style selfie that has ever existed. I was a bit of a scrawny kid, so I had to make myself look a bit bigger than I was, and with a bit of camera trickery, I made it work. When I sent it, she responded with a heart and told me that she was absolutely in love with me and just kept complimenting me and telling me how amazing I was. Like I said, 
I was elated with the fact that someone was out there giving me positive reinforcement. At this point, you may be asking which part of this was the creepy part, and that's actually still coming. In fact, it's what happened next. I will say that, at the time, I wasn't exactly super secure about my information. I wasn't paranoid or anything, but I did still keep some of my information hidden and secured. Like, I had told Amanda my first name and she knew how my last name started, just the first letter. She knew the city I lived in, but that was pretty much it. I guess outside of knowing what I looked like. I didn't anticipate that, with just my first name, last initial, city, and appearance, that she could ever find me in person. But that is exactly what happened. Kind of. A few weeks after Amanda and I had started quote-unquote dating and chatting a lot, she kind of went silent. I was a bit concerned, but at the same time, I had sort of moved past the excitement of having this random online person compliment me. That may sound shallow, but that's pretty much all the conversations were. And after a bit, you kind of grow numb to the constant compliments. I kind of assumed that maybe she had moved on a bit from us as well, and just left it at that. Then, on that really awkward Saturday afternoon, I was sitting on the computer in the living room and playing The Sims. I heard a knock on the door, and I assumed it was just the mailman delivering a package or something like that. So I hopped up and went over to the door and pulled it open. And I had no idea who the person was that was standing there. The man on the other side of the door gave me a huge smile, said my name, and kind of gave a bit of what I guess was a squeal. It was a strange happy sound. That much I remember. I kind of stared at this guy in confusion. I had no idea who he was or how the hell he knew my name. And I kind of said that to him. Like, hi, who are you? He then dropped a bombshell on me, which I'm sure that you're all expecting at this point, and said that his name was Arnold, and that he went by Amanda online. My heart sank. This middle-aged, overweight, balding man was my online girlfriend. Amanda had told me that she was my age, and had described herself in detail, although admittedly she never gave me any photos, which I now know why. Not a single word of the description that she gave me included bald, middle-aged, overweight, male, or creep that would show up at my doorstep on a random Saturday afternoon. I replied to him with, You're Amanda? The girl that I met online, Amanda? He sort of shyly said, Well, yeah, I know I'm probably not what you'd expect, but I'm her. Now, this is where things got really awkward. My dad walked into the room and asked me who it was at the door. I can't even begin to explain the feeling that hit me. I had no idea how to explain to my dad that this guy at the door was pretending to be a 17-year-old girl online, and that we were dating, and that he had somehow found where I lived, and was now at the front door. I tried to say that he was just some guy, but he cut me off and said, I love your son and I drove almost 10 hours to meet him. I'm not going to get into the whole conversation or everything that happened, but I will say that my dad was very confused, and then very angry. Amanda, or I guess Arnold, tried to keep saying that we were lovers and that he was there to come get me and that we were going to live together, and a bunch of other really creepy things that did not help my situation at all. My dad then told Arnold that if he didn't get off the property, he was going to leave in an ambulance. And after a bunch of arguing and the police showing up, he did end up leaving. He hadn't actually done anything. There were no lewd comments ever made between us, no promises of anything, so technically all he did was show up on the doorstep of a minor that he met online. 
which I guess isn't a crime in and of itself. So he was basically told to drive off. Obviously, that was the last time that me and Amanda, or Arnold, ever spoke, and I blocked his email. This was absolutely too creepy and awkward for me, and it absolutely destroyed my trust in people online. I'm older now, and a lot smarter about things, and I don't really have any reason to develop friendships on the internet. One side effect of this is that I, now, just assume that everyone online is a 50-something-year-old balding man that's overweight, which has kind of become a running joke on the internet. If the situation wasn't so terrifying for me at the time, I could almost laugh at the fact that I lived through it. I had a really weird encounter with a guy online about two years ago that I thought would be interesting to share. In the end of the whole thing, nothing really happened to me, but it was a bit eye-opening to the fact that these people exist in our modern world, and this kind of thing happens, even to this day. What's worse, it was on Facebook, of all places, that this whole thing unraveled. So, a couple of years ago, I got a friend request from a name that was vaguely familiar. Like, I knew the person's name from somewhere, but I honestly could not place where I knew him from, nor could I place a face to the name. Their profile was pretty well locked down, so going to it, all I could see was his profile photo, and that wasn't his face. It was a photo of a young child fishing. Like I said, his name seemed really familiar, but I just could not seem to figure out where I knew it from. So, I just kind of assumed that it was someone from high school that didn't make much of an impression on me, or something. I ended up accepting his friend request, and as soon as I did, I got a direct message from him. Like, immediately. To the point that I almost assumed that this could have been a bot, and they were going to pitch some kind of scam to me. The message said, Hello, G-Man12. Thank you for accepting my request. How have you been? Which was definitely a bot-like message. I ended up responding with something like, I'm fine, but how do I know you? He replied with a sad face and a, You really don't remember me? I told him that I didn't, and he mentioned that he went to the same high school as me. Of course, this information is easily accessible, so I kind of just prodded a bit extra to see if they were just scraping my page for information to claim that they knew me. But then he mentioned a specific class. Ms. Browers, biology class, fourth period of sophomore year. He said that he and I were partners in the cell biology project, which made it all click. I actually did know this guy. He was someone that I was acquaintances with. I wasn't super close to him, but he was someone that I had met in the past. So I was a bit more comfortable with adding him as a friend. I mentioned that I knew who he was now and apologized for not remembering him, saying that it had been a long time and that I had a bad memory, just trying to make light of the situation. We chatted for a bit, just catching up on a few things that had happened over the years. And really, it was a pretty normal conversation. The next day, I had actually gotten another message from him. It was just a hey. So I responded and asked what was up, just making small talk again. He sent a message that said, I promise that what I'm about to say to you is not a scam or anything. It's not an MLM, but I have to shoot my shot. Obviously, this message did not bode well. I assumed that he was about to try to sell me on some kind of pyramid scheme, but it was actually weirder than that. He mentioned that he was about to go on a retreat for a group that he was a part of, and that he wanted to talk to me about going with him. I asked what kind of group he was referring to, because it was a bit weird to put it that way. 
and he told me that it was like a church group, and that it was what they called a self-focus and healing retreat, and they encouraged people to bring friends that may benefit from it. He then mentioned that he saw I was going through some tough times, and that it may really help me. I told him that I wasn't really religious, and that I did appreciate the thought, because I was going through some things. But I didn't really see me fitting into the group if it was for a church. He pushed it a bit further, saying that it wasn't a religious retreat, and that all were welcome. I said that if it was for a church, how could it not be religious? And he mentioned that they were not the type of group to push faith on their visitors, and that they would not be trying to convert people. It was simply about trying to find yourself and committing to self-reflection. This all sounded really weird. An event called a self-focus and healing retreat for a church group that wasn't faith-based or religious in nature? I was definitely curious, so I asked him if he could give me any information on his church expecting something like a website or something. He then told me that he could actually get me in on one of their sessions, which was, again, a weird word to use. I asked if it was an in-person thing, trying to get out of it, and he mentioned that, thanks to COVID guidelines, they had moved their normal sessions to be online through Zoom calls. I relented, and said that I would just go ahead and sit in on the next one and see what it was all about. It was an hour of my time on a Tuesday. It wasn't a big deal to me in the end. The minute that Zoom call started, I knew that this was way more than just a little church get-together. When the session started, there was a group of like 10 men that walked into the camera's focus, and they were all wearing white robes and masks not like a certain group that one may associate with this kind of dress. They were actual masks, not hoods. They covered the entirety of the men's faces, with holes only cut out for their eyes. The ten men then started chanting and stepped in unison to create a circle on the stage, and after about five minutes of chanting, they formed a line and stared straight into the camera. No joke, this entire line of men then started to undress, like stripping down from their robes to literally nothing except for the masks. I have never clicked off of a Zoom call so damn fast. This was a cult. This guy was trying to recruit me into some kind of cult, and apparently they needed to be naked to do whatever they did during their weekly meetings? I will give them credit for taking it online to be considerate of those that may not be able to make it in person, but yeah, not for me. The guy then sent me a message about two hours later asking me what I thought, and I mentioned that it seemed a bit cult-like, and that I didn't stay for the whole thing. He got pretty irate, and asked me when I left. I mentioned that I left whenever the old men on stage started getting naked and he went off. He started on about how I didn't understand the importance of what they were doing, what their stripping down signified, and since I left, I missed the entire point of the session. I told him again that this was a cult, and that I didn't need to understand it. Needless to say, he blocked me, which was fine with me. I wasn't really interested in all this because, yeah, cults are not my thing. That's the strangest thing that I've ever dealt with online, and I'm kind of glad that I haven't gotten a message from him about it again at all, and that he decided that blocking me was the proper way to deal with it. And if I'm being completely honest, I kind of almost wish that it was just a pyramid scheme. So, I have a story about a guy that I met on the internet that ended up being, well, I think creep is probably an understatement, but it's the best word I can think of to define him. I'm sure some people out there have more appropriate choice adjectives for him, but creep works for me. 
Anyways, this was a good number of years ago. I was pretty active on a social media platform that doesn't exist anymore. I had garnered a decent following by posting stupid pop culture memes and references. Pretty shallow, I know, but it was fun and I was like 16 at the time, and I liked the friendships that I was making. Mostly because I didn't have many friends in real life. Most of the people that hung around my page were pretty decent, to be honest, and I rarely had to block anyone or report them. One day, I had gotten a message from someone that had followed me saying that they enjoyed my page, and they thought that I was a pretty cool person. Obviously, they hadn't met me, and I didn't put much in ways of personal information out on the page, but again, I was young, and that kind of validation was something that I wanted. They seemed pretty normal at first, just telling me that they liked my content and about how much they enjoyed this show or liked that band. It was a pretty normal conversation for the most part, and then they followed it up with a pretty common ASL, which, for those that don't know, is age, sex, and location, asking for information about me. I told them that I was 16, female, but then said that I didn't really want to give out my location. The other person said that they were 19, male, and that they lived in the same state that I actually lived in. Obviously, he didn't know that, but I was kind of irked to see that he did live in the same state. He didn't push me at all to tell him where I lived, though, so although I was a bit... I said irked earlier, but I don't know if that's the right word, I still talked to him because he didn't know that I lived in the same state. We talked every once in a while, just chatting about whatever, mostly him telling me about the movies and things that he liked. Then, out of seemingly nowhere, he started hounding me and asking me for more information on who I was, and then telling me that he loved me. I told him that he was being a creep, and that if he didn't stop, I was going to have to block him. Then, he threw out, Go ahead and block me, Caitlin, if it'll make you feel better about yourself. I was sufficiently freaked out, because I had never told him my name and there was no indication that my name was Caitlin on my page. I immediately blocked him. The fact that he knew my name told me that he had somehow gotten information on me, and I wasn't going to risk him being a creep even more than he already had. But... Of course, if that was the end of this, it would be a rather boring story, and this was certainly not the end of it. I thought that he was just going to go away after being blocked, but he was just getting started with me, apparently. The next day, I got a DM from an account that had literally no information associated with it. To the best of my knowledge, this site required information like a name and such, but the name was blank. The picture was plain white, and the description on the account was just, not done with you yet. I knew right away who it was going to be, and I wasn't surprised when I saw that the message was, I have something for you. I stupidly said, what do you want? And he responded with an incredibly inappropriate image. I won't describe it, but you can probably guess what it was. I blocked this account too, but it didn't matter. Every other day, he was messaging me with gory images, pictures of himself naked, and other various disgusting things. It hit a point where I just ended up logging off my account entirely, and basically forgot that it existed. For about two weeks, this was sufficient enough to stop him from being able to harass me. Until I checked my email one day and saw a message from an email address that was just random characters. Sure enough, when I clicked that message, I knew that it was him. I knew that it was him. The message was a picture of me from my prior year's school yearbook. It had my first and last name, home address, school address, and then another very disgusting photo of part of his body. This was where I knew that I had to end this. I needed to get someone else involved. I ended up bringing it up to my mom. 
I was a bit slow with explaining it, but after a while, I basically just put it out there that this guy now knew where I lived, where I went to school, had my full name and picture. I showed her the email, and she told me that we needed to tell my dad, and he said that we needed to take it to the police. Thankfully, the police did take it seriously, because this was a fairly credible threat, and he was sending adult content to a minor. We ended up making the report. My parents basically told me that I wasn't allowed to use the computer anymore, and they informed my school of the situation too. That way, if someone was found around the school, or if anyone came up there for me, they would know that it could be this guy. Even worse, that is exactly what happened, and how this all ended. It was about two weeks later, and there was an announcement over the intercom that the school was going into lockdown, and that all students needed to remain in the classrooms. We were all a bit curious and scared. This was the early 2000s, so this wasn't a common thing to have to go through these kinds of things. After several hours, they announced that the lockdown was over, and then my teacher got a call and they asked me to come to the office. When I got there, my parents were there, and I had to sit in with them, the administration, and the police to discuss the situation. Apparently, this guy had come into my school and told the front office that he was my uncle, Ronald, which actually was my uncle's name. And, worse yet, he was an emergency contact for me, and he told them that he was there to come get me out of class for the day because I had a doctor's appointment. Thankfully, the front desk person knew my uncle, and had his photo on file on the computer. And this guy was not him. Plus, they knew that there was a potential threat with this rando, and they asked him to wait in the lobby while they called me down. They then called the school resource officer, and he immediately cuffed this guy. Fun fact about this creep. He was in his mid-40s, not... 19, like he said, and he didn't actually live in the state. He was from Texas. I know that I didn't mention where I lived, but it was nowhere near Texas. Which meant that he already knew where I lived when he asked, and that's why he said that he lived in my state. I have no idea what this guy's intentions were, though I can kind of make some incredibly disturbing assumptions but I'm glad that I ended up talking to my parents about it. I was banned from the computer for something like two years at my house, and I was fine with that. Sure, it was nice having the validation of strangers, but it clearly came at the cost of my own safety and security, and that was absolutely not worth it. In the end, he went down for a number of things, including the content he had on his hard drive, and I don't think he's going to be getting out of prison. Like, ever. I'm thankful for that because I never want to meet him ever again. So that, my beautiful friends, was a collection of online creeps. A bit different from my normal creepy encounter or stalker stories. Interesting to have some stories that are just online only. Not something I've done in the past, so hopefully you all enjoyed it. I know that I did. Again, enjoyed may be a very strong word. I did not enjoy the situations these people went through. They were certainly creepy, and there are a lot of people out there who are just terrifying people online. Though I gotta say... The cult one? Yes, scary, but that's an interesting story. And I'm curious to know more about this cult, not because I want to join, obviously, but because I would like to know more about the cult itself. A cult that operates and recruits through Facebook? And does Zoom calls? I, I mean, kudos to them for embracing modern technology, I guess. I got nothing else to say behind, beyond that. Um, I hope you all enjoyed the stories. I, I did. They were good. Thank you. To those who let me use their stories, and thank you to those who sent them in. You all are amazing people, because again, without you, I wouldn't have this content. Wouldn't be able to share these moments with you. 
you know. So again, thank you. Thank you for listening to this point. If you did, always always appreciate that. If you enjoyed the video, please do hit that thumbs up button as it helps tremendously. If you're new to the channel and liked what you heard, consider subscribing. I may do more of these if I uh, get more stories. I know I've covered some stories where the creeps were online, but I've never done just a collection of them, so we'll see how it goes. And if you're feeling so bold, you can go down below and leave me a comment letting me know your thoughts, how you're doing. Have you ever been recruited to a cult through Facebook Messenger? I would love to hear it. Uh, <laughs> anyways, I mean, if so, you know, send it to me. Just go to asthereavendreams.com. That's an option. <laughs> um, yeah. Hope you're all having a beautiful day. I hope you remember that you are loved. You are valid. You are important. You're the best you that you can be. Never let anyone tell you otherwise. Never forget it. And until I see you again, friends, much love and sleep well. And would you like to join my cult? We meet once a week on Roblox.